Greetings, everyone. It's great to be with you and in learning with you. Our presentation today is entitled Meditation in Depth 9. Meditation is the key and central practice of spirituality and for the mastery of life. By mastery of life, we mean the full realization of what Rosicrucians call harmonium, the harmonious relations within our body, mind, relationships, and environment. Much progress along these lines can be made when meditation is practiced daily. We will first conduct a period of meditation to prepare ourselves for the presentation. In preparation for our meditation, let us first consider a work of art. We are viewing a detail of the painting entitled in Latin, Beata Beatrix, or in English, Blessed Beatrice, by the Pre-Raphaelite artist, Dante Gabriel Rosetta. This particular oil painter, which we're seeing a detail, dates from 1871 to 1872. There are several versions of this oil painting. The detail shown here is from the painting at the Art Institute of, of Chicago. There is a wealth of symbolism in the larger or, or entire painting based on the medieval poet and mystic Dante Alighieri, Dante's poem, La Vita Nova, dating from 1294. The model for the painting was Rossetti's beloved partner, Elizabeth Siddle. The painting is in a way a memorial to her as she passed through transition earlier in 1862. Here also, Beatrice Portinari, a contemporary of Dante in medieval Florence, is shown in preparation for her transition from earthly life. What Rosicrucians refer to as the magnificent experience of the great initiation. For the purposes of our meditation, I will mention that Beatrice is written about not only in this poem, but also in Dante's celebrated Paradiso. As a scholar Travis Patton noted, in the first canto of the Paradiso, Dante was transformed by the light of the sun, which flowed into him as he looked at Beatrice. A central meaning of Beatrice in the writings of Dante is that she represents allegorically the divine within, the experience of cosmic consciousness. As Beatrice appears here attuning with the cosmic, so we ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum in cosmic attunement. As you take a few final views of the painting before we close our eyes, <clears throat> we'll conduct a meditation based on the Rosicrucian Order Amorc booklet, Liber 777 and also a Rosicrucian Digest article dating from 1990 by past Grand Master Donna G. O'Neill entitled Meditation from the Center of the Universe. Later, I'll give you the references for these if you wish to pursue them later. So I invite you now to close your eyes and you may wish to meditate as you're accustomed or to follow my guidance. With your eyes closed, make sure that if you're seated, that your spine is upright so you can breathe unhimbered. You're resting comfortably in the chair, feet flat on the floor, the temple of the earth, about eight inches apart, right ankles at the knees. I suggest you have your hands in your laps, palms down, and take a few deep neutral breaths. By neutral breaths, the Rosicrucians mean neither holding the inhalation nor holding the exhalation. Just enjoy the gentle rhythm of the breath. Part of the great rhythms of the cosmos of which we as a microcosm mirror the macrocosm. Surprisingly simple act, but a very profound one as we spiritualize it in this operation of cosmic attunement. 
First, we'll conduct what the Rosicrucians refer to as the overall exercise. We'll move through our body, the holy temple, gradually enlivening the vital life force that dwells there. Begin with the toes in your left and right feet. Picture there all the cells and atoms and molecules, the tissue, the blood flowing, the skin, the hair. Sense all the rich activities that go on there to maintain a harmonium within us and with all. You may wish to picture a particular color of light there, for example, a white light or some other color that's conducive to you at this time. Maybe an emerald green or an ennobling spiritual purple. Gradually move through your toes, tops and bottoms, the nails, getting into the foot proper, the, the main body of the foot. Sense the sinew there, top and bottom of the foot. All the structure of the bone, the nervous system, the wonderful system and order of it all in the microcosm. As you do this, I, th I think you'll sense the life force, what the Rosicrucians refer to as the vital life force or VLF, is getting further charged, enriched, and ennobled. Gradually move through the foot, the arch, the heel, the ankle, and then gradually move up into the lower part of the leg. Astounded by the beautiful symmetry of the body. And as the Romans said, the symmetria, the harmonious relations of the parts to the whole both in dimensions, but also in actions and operations. So you move up the lower leg, come to the knee, the meniscus, the cartilage there, the various fascinating parts that allow us to have mobility of which we're grateful for. And stand erect. As you move around, pass through the knee, go into the upper legs, the thighs, Picture there the muscles and all the DNA and RNA and the blood flowing and the great electromagnetic channels of energy, the vital voice force flowing. And as we increasingly move up through the thigh, sense as the traditional Rosicrucian master, Jacob Bohm said that truly we are beings of light. As the vital life force gets further and further enriched in us, you can feel a lightness of being that's enriching, ennobling and healing, making us whole. Gradually move up through the upper legs, come to the midsection of our body. Feel the pressure on the seat where you're situated. Then rise up as we pass up, gradually we'll go by the seven main psychic centers in the body. You may wish to spend extra time focusing your attention on them. Continue to take deep neutral breaths, picturing the white light or whatever light you've chosen as you sweep through the body, gradually paying it great respect and honor as the holy temple. Important vessel for us to learn the lessons of life and to become self masters, fulfill our purpose and mission in living. Service to all. As we gradually move up the lower body, sense the presence of the spine, which matches the cosmic axis of the universe, our microcosms mirroring the macrocosm. All these facts greatly give us much greater meaning and purpose in living. Start to attune with the master within that is housed in the temple of the body. It is the true source that can guide us in our life. To move up the spine, think of the vital organs and all their wonderful system and order and action and rhythms in harmony with our deep breathing. The kidneys and the bowels, the pancreas, all these wonderful actions that take place as we move up gradually through our rib cage, the stomach area, 
There's the alchemy of digestion to animate our bodies with the life force and come to the great center of the heart where we feel things ever more deeply as we attune with the cosmic. Sense its great motions of moving the blood through the body as the Rosicrucians knew from earlier centuries. as revealed by the traditional Rosicrucian physician, Harvey. Gradually keep moving up through the chest region. Think of all the elements there, the DNA and the RNA, the molecules, the atoms, electrons, the flow of the electromagnetic energy and the vital life force, all the rich systems in the body at work in harmony. Use this as a period of healing and relaxation. And when you reach the top of your shoulders, move your focus now to the tips of your fingers and move through the hands and the arms, just like we move through the feet and the legs. gradually through the lower parts of the fingers and the digits and the thumb, feeling the enrichment of the breath and the life force and the white light or the light that you're visualizing there. And gradually move up into the main part of the hand, the knuckles, the back and front of the hand, the palm, all the blood flowing there, all the more enriched by the vital life force from our deep inhalations and exhalations. As you move through the hand, you may wish to prolong a little bit the exhalation, which will add a further stimulus to the vagus nerve in the body and increases the intensity of the relaxation response. Evermore giving us a deeper and deeper sense of calm. Of the hallmarks of spirituality and self mastery. Then move up the lower arms, the muscles there the sinew and the veins and all the symmetry and harmonious proportions and come to the elbow and then up through the bicep and upper arms and gradually reach the shoulders where we left off. And reunited at the shoulders, let us gradually move up the neck, dwelling for a time at the nape of the neck, just as we've been moving up through the psychic centers, the great nexus of the nerves there. As we do meditation, we allow the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems come into harmony, which produces a state of enlightenment. And we have the heart, optimal heart rate and heart rate variability then. As we gradually move up through the neck, the throat, the thyroid psychic center there, back in front of the neck, gradually move up into the jaw, the teeth, the tongue, the gums, the lips, the back and front and inside of the head as we gradually move up to the nose and sense the breast coming in there, enlivening us with the vital life force. And up through the brain, we reach towards the center of the brain picture there, the pituitary gland, one of the important regulator glands in the body, the psychic centers. Picture the white light or the light that you've chosen there, enriching and activating further the pituitary gland, and then gradually move to the very center of the brain. There's a pea sized um, element there the pineal gland, the great center where the highest vibrations, the uh, cosmic keyboard, higher octaves are dampened down so we can experience them and have cosmic compressions. So you move through the brain back and front, move through the eyes, the eyebrows, Third eye center between the eyebrows associated with the pineal gland. Move up the forehead, similar spots through your head and the back of the head and the hair. 
And when you come to the top of the scalp, you can feel the flow of the life force and electromagnetic energy radiating out from you in the aura. And now we'll go through briefly two more times the holy temple of the body. Picture now your toes, the center of your attention there. You feel the increased feeling of the vital life force enriching and ennobling you inwardly and outwardly. Gradually move through the toes. Just follow the actions we described earlier. I will guide you less. You move through the foot, come to the lower legs, enjoy the exhilaration of the ascent through the holy temple. You come to the upper legs, mid body, up through the abdomen, back and front, the spinal cord and the rib cage. Move up through the vital organs to the heart. The thymus, the upper chest area, back and front, and the shoulders, and then refocalize on the tips of your fingers. And go through the hands lower arms, the elbows, the upper arms, and reach the shoulders again, then move up to the neck, passing through the thyroid, the throat area, into the, into the lower part of the head, the jaw, the back and front of the head and the lower part. Gradually sweep through and move through the brain, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the eyes, the nose, the forehead, back in front of the upper head, and then come to the top of the scalp and the hair. And then briefly go through the entire body the, for a third time, the final time. After that, we'll ascend to the heights of the celestial saint. So pass through the feet, the lower legs, the knees and the upper legs, the mid body, the abdominal region spine and vital organs there working in harmony. Further up into the chest, the heart and the thymus, back in front of the chest and the upper part of the spine. And when you reach the shoulders, reattune with the tips of your fingers, pass through the fingers and thumb and the joints there. The main body of the hand and the wrist and then through the lower arm, the elbows, the upper arm, come back where you left off in the shoulders and the nape of the neck and the neck, into the jaws and lower head, through the brain and back in front of the head, pituitary gland, the pineal gland again. Third eye in the eyes, the forehead, the upper part of the brain, the scalp and the hair. Now that we've gone through the holy temple the third time, let us ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum. Let us first say together, may the divine essence of the cosmic confuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may enter the celestial sanctum and attune in pureness and in worthiness, so mote it be. Now as we ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum, 
will follow the instructions of the booklet Libra 777 and also the article by past Grand Master Donna G. O'Neill, Meditation at the Center of the Universe. Picture now a great sphere radiating out from you, encompassing the room you're in. Use your psychic capacity and imagination to do this. And then expand the great sphere out to enclose the entire home where you dwell or building where you dwell. And then the entire neighborhood. You keep expanding out. And as you do that, you sense all things that are encompassed within the great sphere. And be aware of with them and attuned with them. You move out to encompass your local geographic area or your entire municipality or city or town. And then let the spear, great ball, expand out to take in your entire province or state. And expand out faster and faster again to take in your great country or nation. All the landforms, the deserts, the hills, the lakes, the rivers, the coastal region, ocean areas, whatever is applicable to your locale. And then expand out again to take in the entire continent where you dwell. And ever faster again, sensing all within the great bowl, all the life forms and energy, both the life force and the spirit energy, take in the entire hemisphere where you dwell. And then the entire beautiful blue jewel of the earth, the great ball or a blade spheroid. As you take it in, sense the revolving action or rotating action about the axis of the earth and expand out again to start to take in some of the solar system. See the great fiery ball of the sun, the huge planet of Jupiter, beautiful planet of Saturn with its rings and the smaller planets such as Venus and Mercury and feel their special psychic influence and expand the sphere out again to take in the entire solar system. We keep expanding at a rate far faster than the speed of light as we transcend space and time. Use great inner spiritual force to be active. Do not be passive at this stage. Later we'll be passive and surrender at the heights of the celestial sanctum. But continue to expand this fear to take in myriad stars, not only the sun, but many other stars larger than smaller than our local star. Very stellar phenomena which is binary stars and quasars and pulsars and the black holes that help keep our universe in balance. And expand the sphere out even further to take in the entire Milky Way galaxy, our local home in the cosmos. And sense within it the great spiraling motion that it has in its arms, again, revolving about a great axis, just like our solar system and our earth and truly ourselves with our spine. And then expand the sphere even more as you look back at the beautiful spiraling design of the Milky Way galaxy. Expand out the sphere to take in nebulae and myriad other stars and galaxies, some galaxies and spiral shapes and others. And keep expanding the sphere out to take in not only individual galaxies now, but super clusters of galaxies. Sense the great range of vibrations of the cosmic keyboard, the higher and higher octaves, not only taking in what we can with our five physical senses, but what we can take in through our subtler senses through the psychic being that we are. Sense the great sea of vibrations spoken of from antiquity as the harmony of the spheres, the great music of the cosmos at the temple of God. Take in more and more super clusters of the galaxies and start to sense the universe itself as a whole being encompassed within the sphere. You've now contained the universe within the sphere that's expanded and sense how the universe is rotating about a great cosmic axis and home in now at the center of that great cosmic axis and make the great sphere that you've expanded around the cosmos its center there as well. And as you come to that great midpoint cosmic axis, slow up and take time to dwell there and enjoy the exhilaration of the ascent and the spectacular view and sense of vibrations all around you. A great system and order and harmonium. Just 
Visualize there your celestial sanctum, maybe an inspiring place in nature or a special temple. Fill it in, your sacred place, with sights and sounds, and maybe symbolism, beautiful stained glass windows, incense rising, whatever is appropriate for your sacred place. Sense there to other seekers and Rosicrucians of like mind, those who are on this teleconference presentation with us, the imperator of our order and the grand masters, great spiritual teachers of antiquity, of later times and of the future they are meditating with us. Just dwell in deep stillness and silence for the exhilaration of the divine within now that we've moved to the center of our being, the center of the cosmos. Just continue to dwell in stillness. Feel the presence of the divine within, the master within, our true nature and guide in life. Always ready to assist us when we're in need. Always ready to help us in healing, to be whole, to have the truer perspective on things, a deeper, more mature, evolved understanding. This deep, still center, we feel not only deeply connected with ourselves, but all through the one soul and the cosmic mind. I think you'll find the vital life force in your holy temple is increasingly charged, enriched, and ennobling you and assisting us to attune with the cosmic. Sense things not only from our individual mind, but the cosmic mind's perspective we begin to merge with it. Experience now as the cosmic mind experiences. Be one with it, assume it. Mind that fills the cosmos. Just surrender and let it happen. Find the mind wandering, just lovingly and gently bring it back to the deep neutral breaths and the presence and awareness of the cosmic mind, being it, assuming it, becoming it, experience as it experiences. Now, as we experience the law of cosmic attunement at work, let us undertake certain other spiritual operations of the work and worship of the Rosicrucian Order Amwark. Let us invoke the law of service by working with the Silent Council in conjunction with the Council of Solas of our Grand Lodge. Let us assist by radiating love and well-being to all those who petitioned our Grand Lodge for guidance and healing, and all those who contacted our affiliate bodies and those we know who are in need, and all those throughout the universe that are in need. You may wish to start first by a general radiation, or another method is to picture someone you know who's in need of healing before you, and picture the health and well-being flowing from your heart and mind to them. It may make a great arc coming down like a parabola on them. Flowing into their body, making them enriched, enriched, 
healed, having an abundance of life and well-being. And gradually add in others, persons around them that are on the Grand Lodge's metaphysical aid list, and then the affiliate bodies list, and all others that you know. So there's a great assembly before you, receiving the light radiations of love and well-being coming from the deep within the divine through your holy temple. Let the holy temple act as a channel for sending our inner outer nature. Let the inner nature, let the flow continue to all those in need of healing. First, you may wish to use a considerable amount of inner spiritual force to get the flow going, but at a certain point, I think you'll find it'll just keep flowing without conscious effort, particularly when you're making contact, it'll speed up. When that happens, just let it flow and continue to surrender to the divine within and let it undertake this spiritual operation with us and as us. Soon we'll conclude this period, the work of the Silent Council in conjunction with the Council of Solas. Assured that these vibrations will continue in a healing way, radiating from us as part of our mission and purpose in life. Just as this period of cosmic attunement becomes a way of life for us throughout our day and night. We'll formally conclude this period of metaphysical aid, sending and radiating love and well-being. By saying, if it pleases the cosmic, it is done, so mote it be. By the cosmic, the Rosicrucians mean all the natural spiritual laws and the divine intelligence back of the cos cosmos. Now let us dwell for a moment longer at the heights of the celestial sanctum, feeling the tonic effect, the law of karma or the law of cause and effect by selfishly applying the law of service without the intention, we are healed as well. Now let us express gratitude for this opportunity to fill our birthright and to apply the law of cosmic attunement, to be of service and for all those who've been loving and guiding personages and teachers in our life. So we express our gratitude to them, which increases our cosmic attunement. Let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Now picture again the great sphere of the universe. Encompass, draw it in, taking in very quickly, passing by myriad super clusters of galaxies, and then individual galaxies, some spiraling and some other motions as we draw in the circle. And the great sphere the myriad stars and nebulae and various stellar phenomena, the pulsars and quasars. And then draw on the sphere again to take in our individual Milky Way galaxy, our great home. And draw it in again, passing by myriad stars and finally our solar system and the great fiery ball of the sun there. 
taking in the planets and drawing the sphere again. Take just in the beautiful blue jewel, the earth, and then just to encompass the north, northern or summer hemisphere where you dwell, continent where you dwell, country or nation, province or state, city, town, or geographic area, as we say, following invocation and prayer. May the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum, so mote it be. And let us draw the circle in to encompass our neighborhood, and then our home or dwelling, and then our room, and our holy temple of the body, and let the sphere come down to a point at our heart. And when you're ready, you wish to open your eyes and stretch, rejuvenated, repaired, remade all the more, ready for the work and worship of our presentation and the duties of the day. Thank you. Now we'll continue with our presentation, meditation in depth nine. We'll consider a series of questions pertaining to meditation. The first question is, does the experience of flow during meditation increase our understanding of the life force within us? The short answer is yes. As we dwell in stillness during meditation, we start to sense more what is happening in our body, the holy temple. It's many motions and operations described as flow, such as the breath, the flow of the vital life force and the electromagnetic energy in the nervous system are all experienced. One may have sensed that that was impossible, but when we become stiller, many things that aren't thought as possible start to become possible. Now the enlivened vital life force or in some traditions in the East referred to as the prana or the chi is very healing and enriching. Our relaxation during meditation activates the healing process. This is a crucial insight in the great value of relaxation and spiritualization during meditation. Even if we do not think we need healing, there is always healing and increased restoration needed with our body, mind, and heart. And in that way, we can be a greater healer of others. We see in this matter expressed the mystical interpretation of sacred texts. For example, the master Yeheshua said in John 10.10, 10, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Our breath, the breath and actions of the microcosm, mirror the going forth of the word the breath and actions that sacred texts describe as giving rise to and continually maintaining the entirety of creation, a macrocosm. This mirroring helps us to attune with the cosmic and have an even greater appreciation and realization of the divine. The flow and manifestation of the divine lead us back to the source, the absolute, The next question we'll consider is, as we become more sensitive to our internal nature during meditation, do we also become more sensitive to others and our environment? Yes. As we become calmer through meditation, we become more attentive, alert, and aware of what is going on inside of ourselves in our body, mind, and heart. This calmness and practice in being sensitive and alert also immediately becomes applied to being more sensitive, alert, and aware of our environment. And being present, that is not preoccupied when we are with others. We can listen more deeply and be more aware of others' feelings and concerns, spoken 
and unspoken. We become more aware of the octaves of the cosmic keyboard, which leads us to be sensitive to the entirety of the cosmic and experience the consciousness of the cosmic. As we did in meditation just before this part of the presentation, that as we come into the cosmic consciousness or cosmic sense, The next and third question is, does meditating with more experienced meditators help us in our meditation practice? Yes. Doing meditation with others is valuable. And there is often more experienced meditators in, in the group. And the person leading the group session. In general, of course, doing an activity sometimes with those who are more familiar, knowledgeable and willing to share, whether it be skiing, tennis, cooking and so forth is helpful, informative. Meditation practice is no different. One can benefit from the experience of other meditators, of course, by listening to recordings of a meditation session leader. Doing meditation on one's own is also valuable, I'd like to emphasize, and is maturing. We become thereby more self-reliant, which is an important characteristic of self-mastery. The master within, the divine within, is continually in the meditative state. So our true nature is very experienced in meditation. It is a matter of getting the the outer self familiar and increasingly receptive as an outer, as a way of life to this meditative state. In a profound way, we are always meditating with others because people are always med meditating when we are meditating, no matter where they are on the face of the earth. And we are all fundamentally connected in the one soul so that we become, which we become increasingly aware of through meditation. The next fourth question is, is it still worthwhile to meditate even if there are not the ideal conditions present? The short answer is yes. It is of course valuable to have conditions we find conducive to meditation such as quiet time in our home sanctum, the sacred center of our homes, with incense, candlelight, or a low level of lighting, and sometimes playing music we find inspiring, and drinking a glass of cold water as a rite of purification before commencing meditation. However, part of the value of meditating under those conducive conditions is to strengthen us to be able to meditate when such conditions are not present or are not readily available, such as when we may feel the strong need to meditate in a challenging situation or an emergency, or while we're at work or en route traveling or waiting in lines or waiting in the doctor's office, when there are background sounds or noises or in many other environments, now, it's good to keep in mind, we may be surprised to find that some background sounds, such as those in nature, such as birds singing, the sound of a brook, or wind passing through trees, can be highly conducive to entering into the state of meditation or experiencing the great harmony, or the music of the temple of God or the temple of the cosmos. And Sometimes we may also find that we have the ideal outer, outward conditions, but we are feeling sleepy or we're anxious or we're in pain and wonder, wonder whether to meditate then. There can still be value in meditating then. We need to let go of being concerned about whether the mind is wandering or not. It is all part of the process. And the meditation will still 
assist the outer self with becoming more resting, calmer, and reduce pain. This flexibility in conditions and environment for meditation also help ensure that we're doing meditation daily and regularly and not putting it off. Now, as our fifth and final question, is, is rising into the cosmic the same as going deep within ourselves? Yes, during meditation, we may experience a sense of rising up or alternatively going deep within ourselves as in a deep cave. By the law of correspondence that is as above, so below in hermetic teachings, the two processes work together. Cosmic impressions need to be clothed in symbols related to our sensory experience in our memory in order for the outer self to comprehend and act on those cosmic impressions from higher rates in the cosmic keyboard. Rising up or going deep within are different ways that we experience the same underlying unity, mystical union and self-mastery. In other words, we experience the same underlying spiritual state and conveyance that is eternal beyond time and space. In this manner, we are drawn into the realization of our divine estate, our true home, and thereby we increasingly feel at home wherever we are in the world through this underlying experience of unity, mystical union and self-mastery. I'll ask Sora Karen now to pay some resources for you in the chat. And she'll also upload a PDF document with those same resources in the chat. In conclusion then, I would like to mention that we have considered some common and not so common questions about meditation. We have continued to explore how meditation makes for the most direct and sure wise cancel in our daily lives and increases our well-being and capacity for service. Thank you. <laughs>